we shot, I think it was like something like 500,000 feet of film. I had to sort of I sing for my supper. Right. The Chris Evans Breakfast Show With Sky All right, what about this film? Exhausting to watch again. Uh, I'm sure it was exhausting to make, but it is a brilliant, brilliant movie. Um, for people who don't know um, what it concerns itself with, would you like to enlighten them? It is uh, it's basically about a dysfunctional sort of uh, family and it's it's scenes are well it's not a movie you take a date to on a on a friday or a saturday night it's uh it's themes of you know drug addiction and alcoholism and um and domestic abuse um and even though it was made you know 25 years ago i think uh, it's it's still as um Prevalent as it were, you know, as it was then. Prevalent and relevant, maybe yeah, more yeah. than ever. Yeah. Um, I remember watching it for the first time. I remember what that felt like. What are your memories of making it? It. <laughs> um, well, I had one camera. We shot on Super Sixteen, um, a little Arton, and we shot. Uh, I think it was like something like five hundred thousand feet of film, um, and this. The, the, this camera was, uh, you could hammer nails with it, you know, and then it, it was solid. <laughs> it was agricultural. And, yeah, it was, it was fantastic, this thing. And what that meant was that the actors would have to do many, many, many takes. Now it's a lot easier. You shoot digital, you shoot multi-camera. So back then it was. Uh, I mean, I, I, I mean, I talk about back then. It really does feel like dinosaur days with, uh, you know, uh, film running through a camera. Um, but they were really committed to the material. I, I can't thank them enough for that, because they work their their butts off. Let's name some names. Well, we got the wonderful Ray Winston, um, who was the first one on board. Um, there were a lot of people. I was surrounded by many, many, many people who did not want to make it and were saying to my manager at the time, uh, well, he's still my manager, but at the time they said, you know, it's career suicide, don't let him do it. No, God, now he thinks he can direct. It was uphill. Um, I couldn't raise any money from Britain. And uh, so I got... Uh, Luc Besson, who I'd worked with on uh, on Leon, he put some money up, uh, raised some money, and and I and I put the rest, I sort of put the rest up. So it was very much a kind of um, I'd made a little money from film. I didn't have um, Lamborghinis and uh, really lavish. I didn't have what I would call a lavish lifestyle and expensive works of art hanging over there hanging over the place so I thought I would I would buy myself a moving picture and the intention was it was an experiment it 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 was um it had a very specific point of view going in um that I think there's two dolly shots one prime lens there's no high shots there's no low shots there's you, you know what I mean it's pretty much head on um long lens a lot of long lenses um, to give you a sort of um, a voyeuristic feel, but also going in very tight and close, so that you uncomfortably get a, close. At times. So you get a sort of you get it's a mix of voyeurism and sort of claustrophobia. Yeah. There was a very strong point of view going in, and uh, some of the people were on board and some weren't. And um, uh, it, it Charlie Creed Miles who. Uh, you know, it's a funny thing. I, fa I saw Charlie and Anna Schur. I went and saw these kids. And Charlie did this improvisation. I thought he was absolutely wonderful and he ended up being in the film. And from there, has enjoyed a, a, a career. Um, he would have had the career, I think, if, if I hadn't have found him, Anna Schur. I mean, I basically was just... I appreciated what was already there. But it really is lovely when you see people do well and they're like your kids, you know, you're sort of growing up and you think, oh, they're really... You know, you're, you're, you're 
really pr- sort of proud of your kids, you know. <laughs> wow. And what a team, what a gang, you know, not just in front of the camera, behind the camera as well. Where were you in your career in 1997? What had you just done then? So what, what, how, what was your vibe? What was going on around you? Oh, hell. Because it's a very fearless film. You must have been feeling very confident at the time. Or Well, I'd done Leon, the mm. professional, yeah. with Luke. Um, and obviously when he put some of the money up, I knew that the call would come to do Fifth Element. I had to sort of I sing for my supper. Right. But I was doing pretty well. Yeah, I was think I was on, on a bit of a roll as, and which, as an actor. And what made you itch and twitch behind the camera most? Was it the fact that you'd never done it before or, or the fact that you were more used to being in front of the lens? What? what how were you during the process? Oh, I, lo- I tell you what, I loved it because I flippantly say, people say, oh, what, what did you enjoy about directing? And I always say that it was great because I could come into work and stay in my own clothes. <laughs> The opposite I, of Churchill. <laughs> yeah, I didn't have to. I didn't have to go through the circus, you know. So the BFI's idea now is, is going to be reissued. It's going to be. It's going to be well, rescreened. Yeah, they're screening. I think over the next. I think it's over the next month. I must say, a uh, big thank you to the BFI, not just for being, you know, brilliant. The, the, yeah, the brilliant, <laughs> the, the brilliant the B- film institute. <laughs> yeah, um, but this would have just languished and sat in rusting in some film tins yeah. you know had they not uh, had they not come in so it's they've restored the the print and also there is a, a dvd coming out with lots of extra little uh goodies on it so. okay and we must thank producers simon and harley hessel who funded some of the yeah. remastering i think yeah and 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 ben uh, stoddart who has been just an absolute champion stand out stoddart stand out stoddart uh, yeah. bfi.org.uk for more information about nil by mouth if you haven't seen it, you have to get yourself ready for it and uh, you know that's not taking anything away from the fact you should watch it it's just an awesome piece of piece of filmmaking gary i love you thank you for coming here thank you for having thank me thank you for always coming to say hello for always oh. fitting us into your schedule oh, I... we really appreciate it thank you